on page SEO, you already know how important it is when you want to increase your Google rankings. But are you doing it the right way? Hi, this is Vishal Kalia from Fashion Marketing. And in this SEO tutorial, I'm going to give you a step by step practical guide that you can implement today to increase your SEO rankings and on page SEO. And as you watch this tutorial, let me know in the comments which step in the SEO guide you would be implementing today. Because the only part of learning something new is if we are actually going to go implement in our blog on our website so we can reap the rewards. So let's start with that SEO tutorial and learn about on page SEO. All right, so let's get started on our practical guide to on page SEO. So in this tutorial, in this SEO tutorial, we are going to go over these things. So I'm going to show you how to actually write a blog title, the URL structure, H1, H2s, keywords, LSI keywords, image optimization, page load speed, and so on. So these are the things that you should be aware of and you should modify in order to enhance your on page SEO for your website and your blog page. So let's dive right into it. Um, so this is title tag, meta tag. I'm, I'm sure you have heard title tag, meta tags to death. So I'm not going to go deep dive into it. The only thing I'm going to tell you here is the reason why I have this slide is Google made this change that the description, which is like this part that shows up right here, they have increased the length of the description from around, I think it used to be around 160 characters to 300. So this update is pretty recent. It's only about three months, but in case you missed here it is. So when you're writing description for your blog post or your page, use the maximum 300 characters okay let's dive into the practical part for on page seo so title so in this tutorial we're going to assume that your main keyword is fashion design schools and everything else we're going to cover let's say if we're writing a blog post on fashion design school how should we create our blog post so your title you should always include your main keyword in the beginning of your blog post title so in this example, if your blog post title, your keyword is a fashion design schools. So your blog post title should be fashion design schools colon and then something after that. So your keyword appears right in the beginning because Google gives more weightage to whatever is in the beginning of your title. So here we'll see fashion design schools and then you can have a question depending on how, how you want to write your title like are they the right way to start your fashion career in 2018. So I included a year here because it tells or tells Google that this information is latest for the year 2018. So if you're doing this in 2019, probably change that and have your title, your keyword right in the beginning. Second thing you should do is your title tag, make it an H1 tag. So like H1, so in your code, you will just write in like, you know, H1 HTML code H1 colon, include the title tag. Here we go. Boom. That is one thing you need to do for your on page SEO. Number two, whichever your main key keyword is, make sure you mention your main keyword in the first 50 words of your article. So as let's say if you started writing your article, make sure your main keyword appears in first 50 words one way or another. I mean, just don't throw it in there, but make sure it makes sense, but it's included. And let's say your main keyword was, you know, fashion design school. And in, when you're writing a page, you probably came up with another five or seven different sub keywords. So let's say your sub keyword first, your first sub keyword is steps to become a fashion designer. So your subheading should be, you use your secondary keyword as part of your subheading. So if your sub keyword is steps to become a fashion designer, your subheading could be three steps to become a fashion designer or five steps to become a fashion designer, whatever you want it to be and make sure your subheading is an h2 tag so if you're even let's say you have your keyword number your sub keyword number two make that a subheading as well and then put that in h2 tag as well your keyword number three make that as your subheading and also include in h2 tag and so on and so forth next level is url structure in in google one thing i've started noticing is i started taking out the date so Google looks at your URL and it says if I usually people used to have it November 15, 2016 or November 15, 2017 or 2018. So they will put the date, the month and the year. But now I don't like to put that thing in there because will Google look at this thing and if it says 2017, it's going to look that oh this article was published last year. Maybe it's not in current information. And usually this URL just looks too long. The cleaner way of doing it is you take your company name and either do blog slash the article title or blog slash the, your main keyword 
and you do or you can just remove the blog if you don't want that and you can just go rogueline.co slash your article title or your main keyword so this could be rogueline.co dash slash fashion design schools so you can write something like that as shown here let's look at site speed so this is very very important so the two tools you can actually use to check your site speed is called gt matrix or developer tool at google so what you can do is once you go to gt matrix And here you will throw in the name of any website. So let, let's do, here we go. I was checking shop Vita. So let's, we, we took shop .com. And what it does is it's going to analyze your site speed and will tell you if your website is slow, if it's fast, you know, where to fix it, how to fix it. Just because your site speed is very, very critical because as you can show, see in this chart, where we go, here we go. So if we'll, we'll come back to that one, it's, it's still loading. So if it, your page load time goes from one second to three seconds, the probability of your bounce rate increases by 32%. And if your page load speed goes from one second to five seconds, your probability of bounce rate increases by 90%. So as you can imagine how critical your site speed is, right? So let's, oh, here we go. So you can just put in your website name and this one gives you a little grade. So the site speed is 8.7 seconds, which is so freaking slow right the page size 7 by 6 mbs you know typically you want your page size to be around 1 to 2 mbs no no more than that and this is way too many requests like 182 you want this to be like minimum maybe like 20 or 30 nothing more than that as you can see the page load speed is c the y slow score is e which is pretty low i mean in another video i will go into much detail on how to do this but you want to make sure your page load time is about two seconds or three seconds definitely not longer than that and your page size around two megabytes at the max smaller than that you better and you want your request to be i don't know like 30 to 40 definitely not like 182 right so this is one of the tools another tool you can also use is developers.google.com speed it does exactly the same thing right so make sure your site speed is optimized and your site flows much much faster especially on mobile too so lsi keywords so LSA basically means the linguistic, uh, no, language semantic index or linguistic semantic index is one of those things, so fancy nerdy word. But basically what it does is, so Google looks for the main keyword that people are searching for, and then it associates what are the other words associated with this main keyword. And the easiest way to find those is when you go on Google. So let's say if this is our main keyword, fashion design schools, you will go on Google. Let's open up here. And we search for fashion design schools. So as you scroll down, so what Google does is it will make the other words that it think are, are, are semantic to this word, it will make those words in bold. So for example, main our keyword is fashion design schools. So let's see what other words are bold. So we have fashion, fashion designing, fashion designing. Let's scroll down. Here we go. So it actually bolds the names of these universities. So as you can see, Parsons School, um, Kent State University, Academy of Arts University. So Google knows that fashion design school, like these words are the LSI keywords for the main keyword fashion design school. So when you're writing your article, you want to make sure you include all these words that are in bold as part of your blog or if you have blog post. So you don't have to put all of them at the same time, but make sure they flows naturally. But these words that are bolded, start writing them down, right? So this is called fashion design school. This is the same that we looked for. Uh, let's see if they have anything else that we can look. Uh, here, here we go, like school of fashion design. So this is another good one to remember. Fashion design, fashion design school, right? So the, the, it looks for these keywords. So these are called LSI keywords. Uh, we'll do a different video, a little bit more on detail on how to find these, but just do a simple search on Google and find which are these keywords that they bold and include those as part of your um, of, of your main keywords. And Google, that will definitely help in your SEO because Google thinks that these are the keywords associated with it. And as your association increases, Google gives you more. So another example could be if you're writing about, um, you know, best places to eat in San Francisco, and Google knows that the places in San Francisco are, you know, you have Soma, you have North Beach, you have Marina, you have, um, you know, Mission District. 
So if you're writing best places to eat in San Francisco and you don't include these words, Google will associate that this article is not really about San Francisco because you never mentioned the locations that are located in San Francisco. So always look for these kind of keywords that are not directly derivatives of this thing, but these are called the LSI keywords, okay? So dwell time. So dwell time is very, very important. So remember we talked about bounce rate. Bounce rate is when somebody searches on Google, lands on your site, and within two, three seconds, if they didn't like your article, they came back. That is considered negative. Dwell time, if somebody searched for any topic, they landed on your site and then they consume that content, they stay there, you know, kept using it. So if you go for previous example, that same this one, I searched for fashion design schools and let's look at organic results, right? So this is by 50 fashion design schools. So I clicked on this link and the information seems pretty interesting, right? So let's say if I'm here, I'm exploring and I spend some time here, let's say, you know, one minute, two minutes that this is called the dwell time, which means that when user even came to the site, they spend the time on the site and didn't bounce right away. So even now when I went back, I've consumed the content, now I went back and if I search for something else, it means, so Google interprets as that I searched for something and when I found this, it solved my query and now actually I've ended up searching for something else. So that is called dwell time. So the way to increase your dwell time is you want to write long, engaging content. So because if the content is long, people will spend time reading it. And if it's engaging, people will also spend time reading it. So typically you want to write your blog post around, I would say 1500 to 3000 words on, on average, but longer the better and make sure it's written very well. So dwell time, like increasing your dwell time will actually help you with your own page SEO. So image optimization, this is, this is pretty um, simple. So every time you have written your article, you know, make sure you have different graphs, different charts, because you don't want to write an article that is all text. So you have a little bit of text, then you have a graph or maybe a chart, and then you have another text and you have another chart. So it's easier for user to read and also make sure you have alt text for each image. So if you have an image um, on, on these articles, let's take a look at here. Uh, let's try this one. See, like th these guys actually have no images, which I would not recommend ever doing. Um, you always want to have like some sort of images. So let's say if this is the main image. So you always want to have like an alt tag for this image because in case the image doesn't uh, load up correctly, there's a way that actually shows that this is an image for this particular fashion school or something. And make sure your alt tags for all these images always exist, right? So UI UX is pretty critical too, especially, you know, since most 80% of the people now read their content on mobile. So if it's a pain in the ass to read content on mobile, people are just not going to read it. You know, so make sure your content is responsive and please, please do not write long paragraphs because look at this thing, right? So if somebody wrote this part and I am looking at it on, on my mobile phone, first of all, this thing doesn't even look like it's mobile friendly, right? If I'm looking at this on, on my mobile phone, Look how difficult it is it's for, for me to read. This is way too much information, right? So typically I will break it down each. So like, see this line seems a little bit easier to read. This seems easier to read. This is way too much. So I typically when you're writing, so I will do long paragraphs and I would break them. I'll break them in paragraphs. So they're like maybe three lines or two lines, but nothing more than that. Because on mobile phone, it makes it much more easier. Like this paragraph, I'm just never gonna read it when, when it's on my on my phone. So that's one of the things for your um, uh, mobile phone, for your responsive design. Now if I can just make it back, there we go. Voila. So use your subheadings wisely, drive the content properly. So you know, and remember we talked about using H2 tags, your five to seven sub keywords as your subheadings. So make sure you do that. Use images, graphs, charts in different proportions. So you have some text, then an image, some text, some image. So it's easier for people to flow and there's like a little break. Uh, social sharing, make sure it's easy for users to share your content. You have, you know, typical LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Um, in, I don't think you can share from Instagram or Pinterest shares, make sure the buttons exist. And last and not the least is links. So there are two types of links, um, two inbound and outbound so inbound is internally you're linking to other blog posts on your on your blog or linking to other content or product pages from your existing page so you use this very wisely because if you have let's say you have one page 
let's say one page and you have other blog posts and all those blog posts are linking to this particular page google will assume that that particular page has a higher value or good content or is credible that's the reason why you're trying to link from other pages to that and doing that will actually increase your on-page SEO for that particular page. So make sure if you have one page that you want to really boost up the SEO, your other blog posts, try linking to that particular page. But make sure the linking makes sense. Don't, don't just link it for the sake of linking, right? Uh, outward links, this is more part of your off-page SEO, but you know you want to drive traffic and links to your main page. So I, I just wanted to mention here quickly. You know, so to kind of sum up, you know, Look for the blog title, make your your structure is clean, use h1 and h2 tags, find the keywords, use the LSI keywords as we talked about searching on Google. Image optimization, make sure they have title tags, um, I'm sorry, make sure the image has all tags and the image is optimized. Have your links, page load speed, very, very important. You've got to make sure your page loads much, much faster, especially in mobile. Design needs to be responsive, show, social sharing, oh, the image optimization I've written twice, but anyway. So these are like the basic things you need to do for your on-page SEO. So, you know, this is Vishal Khali from Fashion Marketing. And if you have any particular question on anything you want me to go into deep into these that you didn't understand, you know, please do leave them in the form of a comment or which part that you actually think was most beneficial to you that you can actually are going to implement today. Because if we don't take action, then there's no point in we're learning these things, right? So if you have any questions, do let me know. And if you like our video, please give it a thumbs up and looking forward to hearing from you. And thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day.